years. HGO was founded in the 1950s, it's sort of the post-war boom. It was a time of great economic prosperity. There was lots of pent-up energy and enthusiasm the post-war years. And so HGO was founded in a time that really reflected the spirit of Houston in the time that Houston was growing rapidly. You might think that a company, if they were gonna launch an opera company, they would put on the most popular work, the easiest work, that everybody would say, oh, I wanna come and see that. What did they pick to put on? Salome. It was challenging, but it sort of made the statement, I think, that Houston Grand Opera is going to take risks, they're going to step out, and they're going to put something on the stage that will challenge people to look, to respond, to walk out thinking about it. And I think that was the perfect beginning for Houston Grand Opera. David Gockley arrived at the right time in Houston. He arrived in the boom years of the 1970s and he, he seized his moment in this city. And David knew that if he had the right ideas, that this city would support them, and, he, and they did. That's the nature of, of companies. They get started by somebody with great passion, great tenacity, and a drive to make a company great. Um, and certainly, you know, David Gockley very much filled that role of I don't care what it takes, I'm going to keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, and make a great company. Through the alchemy of words and music, we have Houston Grand Opera's premiere of Nixon in China. Transforming us as we transfix make history, history. One of the great legacies of David Gockley and the American composer, Carlisle Floyd, is that they founded in this company the Houston Grand Opera Studio, which was founded to address a need at the time that American singers should be able to train in America. It has been phenomenally successful at that. Now, ironically, we get singers from all over the world who want to come to the Houston Grand Opera Studio to train. We had Jones Hall, and the ballet and the opera felt that we needed a state-of-the-art performing arts building. If we were going to have this theater, where would we put it? What would the design look like? And how much would it cost? And oh my gosh, well, no, we cannot raise that much money. The money for the Wortham was all privately raised. It was a group of people who worked for years and years to make this dream a reality. In spite of the most challenging times probably that this city had seen, there was a great feeling that this city deserved and needed to have this theater. I think it's 25 years that the building has been built, and I think it's still a state of the art. I mean, people still remark about that. The Wortham Theater Center is one of the world's great opera houses. And we're really fortunate to be the beneficiary of such a great space to do our art in. Houston Grand Opera is still the only opera company in North America to have won an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony Award. Um, and that really talks about the history of the company and, and why this company is, has, has had its reputation for high quality art for a long, long time now. The bulk of our repertoire over the years, if you look at 50 years of the repertoire of Houston Grand Opera, the bulk of that repertoire has been American. And, and that is unique in opera companies our size. So it's the taking of traditions and melding them into something that's rather Texan at the end.